This isn't your first visit to Pittsburgh. I'm Jim Cunningham from WQED FM. We look forward to hearing you on the radio with the Haydn this weekend. Uh, when was the last time you were here? It was with Pinka Zuckerman, if I remember. Yes, that's correct. I think it's about five, six years ago that I played with the Pittsburgh Symphony for the first time, and I just remember how much I enjoyed that experience. And well, now, you know, having rehearsed with them again, it's just really wonderful and very inspiring to play with that orchestra in this wonderful, beautiful hall. And your first time with Arult Remerite, the new music director of the Rochester Orchestra. Yes, it's very, very good to meet him and to work with him. How often do you do the Haydn? Well, this season I have been playing it a couple of times, but it's it's definitely not a very, I guess, obvious showpiece. Um, so it's not really played much. Um, but I think it's a beautiful, really worth worth listening to piece. When did you first play it? Uh, tell me why you love it. I actually have not played it when I was a kid. I think that's usually when you come across, uh, you know, one of the Haydn violin concertos. And I played the other one, the G major concerto, when I was, I don't know, eight, nine years old. But this one, I have, you know, I've, of course, I knew about that. I've heard it in, actually, I've heard it in performance a few times, but I've never played it until um, they need to. Well, Papa Haydn, Franz Josef Haydn, 104 symphonies. At some point, he said, I am the piano. He wrote so many piano sonatas. Chief keyboard officer uh, in charge of the orchestra, in charge of composing, and amazing to think of the productivity of the guy. He wrote so much music and so much of it marvelous, like the concerto that you're playing. Oh, absolutely. And, I mean, while being so prolific, he's also like, so creative. I mean, just looking at this C major violin concerto, for instance, it's really bursting off, you know, beautiful melodies. And also, um, the, the phrases aren't, I think, well, it's not what you may expect, so the length of the phrases really vary. And um, that just adds to a really, really charming and very rich and interesting piece, I think. Is there a cadenza? Well, yeah, there are two spots, two very obvious ones, you know, at the end of the first movement and the end of the second movement, um, inviting the soloist for a little cadenza. And I do play cadenzas. Um, I think the major part of those are, I think, if I'm not wrong, by someone by the name of Bayer, German. Composer, I guess. Mm -hmm. Not by Tomasini, I guess it was Luigi Tomasini that Haydn wrote it for, his concertmaster there in Esterhazy. Yes, well, I'm, I'm afraid I, I don't even know, you know what he actually came up with at that time, because I think at that time every soloist was genius enough to just uh, just invent something on the spot, probably. And uh, nowadays, nowadays, I guess, very, very few... And what's the buzz from Berlin? What are musical people talking about? News of the arts, news of the music world? There's, there's, over the years, the last five, ten years, there's been a lot of discussion whether there's too much government money going to the arts, too many orchestras, too many opera houses in Berlin. I don't know if that's settled down. Uh, what, are, what are people talking about in Berlin these days? Well, I think, as probably everywhere, there are constant uh, <laughs> shortages in you know, funds for any cultural um, institution, but of course also for all, all the orchestras in Berlin, and Berlin happens to have, it's because there have been, you know, two parts of Berlin, East and West Berlin, of course, there are, there's um, an exceptional number of outstanding orchestras. You have basically, you know, East and West radio orchestras, plus you have East and West opera, plus yeah, actually two operas in the East, and what you were just referring to, the um, um, cutting down or um, blending of orchestras, a fusion of um, the opera, the three opera orchestras. Um, of course, um, all these talks weren't very helpful in uh, well securing the money for for those orchestras. And I think currently the East Berlin Opera Staatsoper they are um, well they have moved venues because the the actual opera building is uh, being re reconstructed or it's under construction and they're now playing in an other theater. So there has been a little bit of special attention to that, you know, at the beginning of this season, um, whether that would work or not. And so far it seems to be, you know, fine. 
I remember a couple years ago, our Wall Street Journal had an article, Zillions for Kultur in, in uh, Berlin, because the tax that Berliners pay is so enormous, something like $750 a year per person in tax to support the arts, remarkable among any Western nation or city, uh, there really is an amazing concentration of arts activity in Berlin. Of course, it's a major European capital, but it's even for European capitals above the, the norm, I think, in terms of what's happening in the arts and music world there. Yes, I think it's actually really quite, quite unbelievable, um, you know, just what, what kind of an offer you have every day, every evening, every, yes, really, at all times of the day. Um, there is uh, such a such a richness in in uh, what Berlin has to offer, I think, culturally. Although the city, I think, has traditionally been quite poor, and it's traditionally been you know a student city and a city where lots of artists, I think, feel feel at home. Um, and at the same time, I think that just helps helps to uh, create this kind of a atmosphere that um, proves to be quite um, quite good you know for for artists to to live in what do you take advantage of do you go to films do you go to